In this video, you'll learn how to automatically create a complex layout from a business object using data annotation attributes. You will learn how to prohibit the layout item generation, specify display names for generated layout items, arrange layout items into groups, reorder items, and specify their data type. You'll also use dedicated events to customize settings of generated layout items and editors. First, locate the data layout control within the toolbox. Drop it onto the form and close the controls wizard, which was automatically invoked. In this video, the data layout control will be bound to a data source in code. Let's consider the following cars business object, which contains multiple fields with no attributes applied. To bind the data layout control to this object, specify the control's data source property using the binding source component. After that, call the retrieve fields method, which obtains information on available public properties in the bound object and creates layout items with appropriate editors. Now run the application to see that the data layout control automatically generates a linear layout containing layout items for all fields in the bound business object, ID, image, make, etc. Note that created layout items are arranged in one column. Let's close the application and apply specific annotation attributes in the cars class. First, you need to add the system.componentmodel.dataannotations assembly to your project. In the Solution Explorer, right-click References and select Add Reference. In the Invoked dialog window, locate the target assembly reference, select the corresponding checkbox, and click OK. After that, add this assembly to the project to start working with data annotation attributes. First, let's prevent the ID field from being automatically generated by the data layout control. To do this, apply the display attribute with the auto-generate field parameter set to false to the ID field. Run the application to see the layout without the ID item. To assign custom captions to layout items, use the display attribute with the name parameter. For the image field, specify an empty string to hide a label. Run the application to see layout items with custom names. Now return to design time and combine specific layout items into groups by applying the group name attribute. Let's create a tabbed group with the details tab containing the make and model layout items. To create a tabbed group, enclose the corresponding group name with curly brackets. When a group is nested in another group, the group name attribute should specify the full path to the target group using the forward slash for delimiting group names. Let's then arrange the HP, CYL, and MPG items into a borderless group that has no title. To do this, enclose the corresponding group name with angle brackets. Insert the hyphen character after the group name to specify the horizontal item orientation. Now let's run the application to see the layout that contains a tabbed group with one tab and a horizontally oriented group with three items. Now go to design time. Place other layout items into groups and run the application again. Pay attention that the image is located on the left while the tabbed group is located at the right. Let's close the application and interchange their positions. To accomplish this, apply the display attribute with the order parameter to appropriate data fields. Now run the application to see the tabbed group at the left and the image at the right. Let's now assign a multi-line editor to the description field and apply formatting to the price field. Apply the data type attribute with the multi-line text parameter to the description field to use a multi-line memo editor instead of a single line text editor for editing this field. Then apply the data type attribute with the currency parameter to the price field to create a text edit with the numeric currency mask. And let's run the application to see what the form looks like now. The data layout control also supports a set of data validation attributes. Let's use the range attribute to check whether the delivery date value is in the specified interval. Then mark the model field with the required attribute to specify that this value is required. Now run the application. When you set the delivery date value to a date that is out of the specified range, an error icon appears. 
Such an icon is also displayed if you try to leave the editor for the model field with an empty string. The Data Layout Control provides events to customize settings of auto-generated layout items and their editors. Let's change the editor type for the SIL field to a Spin Edit Editor. To do this, handle the Field Retrieving event, which fires each time before a layout item with an embedded editor is generated. In the Event Handler, check the Field Name Event parameter that specifies the data field currently being processed. Assign a spin edit editor to the SIL field by setting the editor type event parameter. To apply the changes made, set the handled parameter to true. Now run the application. A spin edit editor is used for editing the SIL field. Let's now move the notes text to the top edge of the corresponding layout item and align the checkboxes to the left. To do this, handle the field retrieved event, which fires each time after a layout item was generated. To recognize target fields, check the field name event parameter. The generated layout item settings can be accessed via the item event parameter. The control parameter allows customizing the generated editor's properties. For the description field, locate the item's text region at its top edge. For the in stock and automatic transmission fields, place the checkbox glyphs at a near position. Since this action leads to displaying caption text which were invisible before, Hide the labels of the corresponding layout items. Now let's run the application to see the result. The notes text is now located at the top edge of the corresponding layout item, while checkboxes are aligned to the left. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.